Hello. What's up, everyone? It's me, your friend, Tanner Babcock here. I'm coming at you with another brand new video. I am aware that the thumbnail for this video <laughs> and the title of this video are a little, uh, a little clickbaity, a little divisive, a little uh, Luke Smithy. <laughs> And uh, the purpose of this video is not for me to shit on Vim or Vim users. <laughs> I'm not going to be calling Vim users stupid or anything like that. But uh, I am going to be making a case for Emacs for why every current Vim user right now should at least give Emacs a try and uh, try doing some work with Emacs. And that's really all this video is about, is I'm just promoting Emacs. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about why it's different than Vim, how it's different than Vim, and I'm going to be showing some of the cool things you can do with Emacs. Uh, first things first, I am going to show off my GitHub sponsors profile. Please, if there's anyone out there at all who would like to sponsor me on GitHub, there is a link to my GitHub in this video description. Uh, these are the reasons why <laughs> I need some money. So if there's anyone out there at all who would want to give me some money, uh, please do, <laughs> because I need it. You have uh, three choices here. You could choose to give me $4 a month. You could give me $20 a month or you could give me $100 a month. And I would really be able to do some great work. I would really appreciate it. Uh, my friend Jonah has already sponsored me. That's him down there. Uh, you should try to be more like Jonah <laughs> and give me some money. If you don't feel like giving me some money on GitHub, there is my Patreon page. Whoa click something there. Yeah, here's my Patreon. If you had been subscribed to my Patreon, you would have seen this video one day early. You would have had early exclusive access to this video, and you would have been able to see it uh, one day before it goes public on YouTube. So, that's a really great reason why you should subscribe to my Patreon. My Patreon has more options than uh, my GitHub does. You could choose to give me $4 a month here. You could choose to give me $8 a month, which uh, you could give me $8 a month. You could give me $16 a month, which would make you a bronze patron on my Tanner Babcock patron chat on Discord. You could give me $32 a month on Patreon, and that would make you a silver patron. And you would have more privileges on my Tanner Babcock patron chat on Discord. You could also choose to give me $64 a month, which is my gold tier. And if you chose to give me $64 a month, you would become a moderator on my Tanner Babcock patron chat discord. That's right, you would have elevated privileges as a moderator if you were to give me $64 a month. And the highest tier is $128 <laughs> a month. That's right, that's the platinum tier. If anyone out there were to give me that much money, uh, you would become an administrator on my Tanner Babcock patron chat Discord, and you would have uh, a lot of privileges. You could basically do whatever <laughs> on my uh, Discord chat. So that would really be awesome. If there's anyone out there who would want to subscribe to my Patreon, uh, there's a lot of great stuff that's in it for you. If you subscribe, um, you would have early exclusive access to great GNU Linux videos like this one. So yeah. Anyway, on to the video. 
In this video, I'm going to be showing off my Emacs configuration, my Doom Emacs configuration, and I'm going to be showing off my uh, org documents, my literate configuration files. Let's go ahead and start up Emacs here. Aha! There's Doom Emacs. I have customized the the splash screen on my uh, my Doom dashboard. This is called Doom dashboard, and so I made it so it picks a random image to use up here, and uh, I customized this menu. I customized all of these key bindings. These are the keys that uh, that you can press to run any of these options. So if I want to open my literates configuration file, uh, the main configuration file for Doom Emacs is going to be config.org. So what I could do is I could click this or I could press C, just a lowercase c, and I'm going to do that. <clears throat> Here is my Doom Emacs literate configuration. So now, what is an org document? If you're a Vim user, I mean, you have no idea what this is. You probably don't know anything about org or tangling or, you know, exporting to HTML, but that's what this document is. This document is my configuration file. The configuration file is actually called uh, config.el for Emacs Lisp. But you can make a document like this, call it config.org, uh, set it to tangle, tangle the Emacs Lisp code, and uh, it will output to a file called config.el. And it will put all of this code that you see here in these code blocks. It will output all of this code into config.el. So, how do you tangle an org document? Um, for me, I have a key binding where I can tangle any org document just with space and L. And it says down there, tangled 13 code blocks from config.org. That means it took all of this, it took this, it took this, it took uh, this, and it took all of these little code blocks and it, uh, it put them in the file config.el. This, uh, this looks like a link, but it's an image actually. Yeah, in org documents, you can have these nice headings. You can create a table of contents which works inside of Emacs where you can just click a heading and it will jump to that section of the org document or that section of your configuration. You can click on, a, click on any of these headings here. Packages, Tremax, Doom Themes. All of this code <laughs> is necessary. This is all very necessary. Uh, there's a bit of a learning curve to uh, reading and writing this language, Emacs Lisp. I'm kind of getting the hang of it, though. I've customized a lot of things. I've customized this, uh, this window title. I've customized, I just showed you my Doom dashboard, the, the splash screen. When you switch buffers with space comma, uh, I've set it so it shows me these icons, these nice icons down here in my uh, buffer menu. But yeah, so I tangled that with space L, and what that key binding does is it runs the command org babble tangle. And that does the same thing. That is the tangling process that you are going to want to run if you wish to have a literate configuration file like mine. Now, uh, you're probably wondering, what's this HTML? That's HTML code here, right? 
Yeah, right up here I have a, a header tag with some basic navigation links in here. And at the very bottom of this document, uh, I have another HTML code block that has these uh, footer tags to show the, the footer of the document. It has taken me, I mean months, months and months to get this good at emails. <clears throat> it took me a long time to get good with them, to get comfortable with them, and to uh, <clears throat> just feel like I could use them for everyday text editing, and now I'm getting to that point with Emacs. <clears throat> I'm starting to understand a lot of this code, a lot of this code I, uh, I just picked up from other people's Emacs configs that are out there on the internet. You can go out there on the internet and look at other people's uh, Emacs literate configs because Emacs promotes that kind of stuff. But these HTML blocks, these org documents, not only output this code, this Emacs Lisp code to the file config.el. It can also export this document in HTML. There's one little thing that I have to do if I want to export any of my uh, org documents as HTML. It's kind of weird, but I'm just going to do that really quick right now. I am using evil mode. My distribution of Emacs, Doom Emacs, offers something called Evil Mode, which is like, it, uh, it has all of the Vim key bindings. All of the Vim commands, all of the Vim key bindings, like you press I to enter Insert Mode, uh, you press Escape to go back to Normal Mode, uh, you press Slash, Dashboard, you press slash key to search for something. So if you're a Vim user, you can just install Doom Emacs. And, uh, I mean, you're ready to go. You're ready to start editing files, saving files, because it's basically like a little Vim <laughs> inside of Emacs. All of the Vim commands work. All of the Vim keys work exactly uh, like the way you would expect them to, unless you have some custom Vim key bindings set in your Vim configuration. Obviously, it's not going to know about those. But, uh, this is really nice. I think this is a big draw for Emacs. It's something that uh, gets more and more Vim users using Emacs, because if a Vim user can think, hey, maybe Emacs isn't so hard. Maybe I don't have to memorize it. <laughs> All of these crazy key bindings where you use the control key, and there's key chords. You gotta do two different combinations, one after the other. Uh, no. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> because of evil mode. It makes things really nice, and you know, I just picked up Emacs right away. I started writing stuff in Emacs, and I started getting the hang of it. So yeah, I have to comment out this table of contents right here before I export this document to HTML. And I have this little bit, TOC headlines 2, which will generate a table of contents. But uh, I'm not going to save this file. I'm going to run space P. And what that command does is it exports this buffer as HTML. I wonder what command that actually is. I think it's org export org HTML. Export to HTML is the command. So now, this will create a file that is in my uh, my Doom Emacs folder. I'll go into my Doom Emacs configuration directory. And as you can see, 
It has created this file. Yeah. It has created this file, config.el, which is the actual configuration file. And uh, it's also created this config.html file, which is the output of the export to HTML process in org mode. And that file, config.html, which is available on this repository I'm about to show you on my GitHub, and it is also available in my .files repo on GitLab, which there is a link to that in the video description. But I got this new GitHub Pages website. <clears throat> Yes, GitHub gave me this website for free. Uh, they give everyone their own free website. It's just a static site that serves HTML, and uh, I've been using it to export my org documents to. So this is uh, just index.html or index.org. Here's my header. So this block of code right here between these header tags that will give me this nice uh, navigation bar. Okay. There's the table of contents over here on the, on the right, and this is a fully functional website. Like if we wanted to look at my Doom Emacs config, there is a link to that right here. So that file I just exported, config.html, that's this, this file. Oh. Yeah. There's my screenshot for Doom Emacs. Here's the table of contents listing on the side. And as you can see, it gives you these nice, uh, these nice code blocks. I stole this CSS from somewhere, I don't remember where, but I just found this CSS style off of someone's GitHub, and uh, it works really nice for exported org documents. This code looks really nice, the headings look nice, um, the images look alright. You can have images in org documents too. Yeah, in GitHub and GitLab, uh, you know, they can interpret org files. If I wanted to go to this repository on GitHub, which is just on my GitHub account, babcock.github.io, that repository is right here. <clears throat> and uh, this is a readme.org. So GitHub and GitLab can actually read org documents, and it can uh, render them as if they were markdown documents. And you can use them for, you know, a readme or for a license file. But yeah, I have some other configuration uh, literate configuration documents on my GitHub pages website. Here's the init.org, which tangles to init.el. Here's my dot .files fetcher script. That's on here. Here's my foot configuration because I'm using the foot terminal and I am running a Wayland session right now. This is River. This is my uh, literate configuration for the foot terminal. And as you can see, uh, this method of writing literate configuration files, it's not just limited to uh, Emacs Lisp. It's not just limited to configuring uh, Emacs. You can configure any program you want this way, and Emacs org mode will tangle it into the appropriate file format. Like this is just a standard configuration file. It pops up right there, it says configuration file, but it still has this nice uh, syntax color. The table of contents, if you click on these headers, it will jump to those sections of the document. References, appearance, colors. It's a little tricky getting it to work like that for uh, the GitHub Pages website and for just looking at the document 
in, uh, in Doom Emacs. But yeah, I'll just close this buffer with space U, which is another one of my key bindings, my custom key bindings. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I've been playing with this for the past couple of weeks, past couple of months. Spent the last three, four, five months learning how to use Emacs. It works really well. I can press K to kill all of the buffers. When you use Emacs, you don't really realize how many buffers are open at any time, so I created this little command to kill them. Kill all the buffers. Uh, this next option is for find a file. You just press F. It gives you this nice find file dialog. Uh, this part down here, this little find file dialog, this is called vertical. Find file, you can do a, open a recent file, and that will give me my list of recently edited files. You can do open project, which gives me a list of uh, valid git repositories that I have been editing in Emacs. So, tb.com, there's my website. I'll just open up a DRED for tb.com. Yeah, this is called DRED. This is the Emacs file manager. It has uh, the Vim key bindings, H, J, K, and L, for uh, left, down, up, right, respectively. And you can go throughout the directory tree, looking at different directories. And you can open a file just like that. <clears throat> so Emacs is really, really handy. As you can see, as hopefully you are starting to see, that Emacs is so much more than just a text document. It can do all of these things. It's a file browser. It's a a Git client, it's a IRC client, it can read RSS feeds, it can handle uh, music and multimedia, it can show uh, image previews of image files. Here's my custom uh, frame title down here. It says, it shows this little arrow and then says art.php which is the name of this current buffer, and then it shows the circle, and then it says tb.com, which is the name of my project. There are a few lines of code in my config.org which are responsible for this, uh, this frame title here. I could split my Emacs window uh, just like you wanted to split a Vim window and type vsplit, doom.d config.org and I can open that in another window. Yeah, the frame title is... I don't know. It might be in the other one. Because <laughs> there's two configuration files. Uh, config.org and init.org there's some other things here. This is my menu. This is my Doom dashboard menu. Right here. Uh, I customized all of the menu options. Uh, you have to have an action for each option. Uh, and I picked all of these icons from the package called All the Icons. And whenever I bring up a Doom dashboard, it will load this information and it will render my custom menu options. Here's some more key bindings. Here's a table. You can have nicely formatted tables in org documents. So here's a table for all of my key bindings. And this does render properly in a GitHub and GitLab. And it looks nice on the web, too. 
And here's all of my key bindings for the Doom dashboard. There's more key bindings than there are uh, menu options, and they're all right here. So yeah, I'm at the point now where Emacs is just starting to get like really, really useful to me. <laughs> it's getting really useful. I'm starting to depend on it for a lot of my tasks. Like I have all of my configuration files are org documents now. So that means I have to edit them in Emacs so I can tangle them and so I can export them as HTML to my GitHub pages. But yeah, let's kill this buffer, let's kill this buffer, and we'll go back to the Doom dashboard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset my Emacs daemon so I can show you a different uh, splash image up there. Just close the Emacs window. Now Emacs runs as a daemon, as a background daemon. So if you want to fully restart Emacs, you have to type a command like this. pkill x Emacs, and then after that run Emacs daemon. And it'll, it'll say something like that. <clears throat> now I'll launch DMAC, uh, Emacs again my key binding super shift comma and is that picture different <laughs> I don't know but I have my configuration to uh, to pick from a series of images I'll open this init.org <clears throat> Here's all of the uh, plugins, the official plugins I have installed in my Doom Emacs environment. You just uh, uncomment one of these lines <clears throat> and tangle it and run a Doom reload and it will install these packages from the, the central Emacs repository. Here's the frame title. This is where it sets the the title of this Emacs window. And, uh, here's all of the files that it uses for the dashboard. So how many is that? Five, ten. It picks one out of ten files in my splash directory and it uses that for the Doom dashboard. So yeah, I'll just go into that splash directory. There's one of the pictures. Um, yeah. There's that one. Yeah, Emacs can show image previews. It's really nice. Well, anyway, guys, I'm going to bring up my, uh, my actual website here, my primary website, <laughs> tannerbabcock.com. I'm going to wrap up this video. It's been a lot of fun. I hope that I've made a case for Vim users to try out Emacs. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, when I first started using Emacs. I just thought it was this weird thing. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't <laughs> I didn't understand. But uh now I do understand and now it's getting to the point where like I need Emacs. I am depending on Emacs. I don't really like to leave Emacs. <laughs> I could stay inside of Emacs for like hours and hours because there's so many great tools. It's such a great environment to work with. And I really enjoy reading and writing all of that Lisp code. There's a there's an Emacs subreddit. There is an Emacs uh, Stack Exchange forum. So uh, yeah, 
My name is Tanner Babcock. Thanks for watching my cringy Emacs video. Please check out my website. Please subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, please donate to my GitHub sponsors profile. <laughs> and uh, if you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and it really means a lot. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Peace.